Hey, welcome back to the Car Doctor Studios. Thank you for stopping by the shop. I got an interesting one here for you today. I thought it was worthy of a quick video. What we have for your viewing pleasure is a 97 Chevrolet Silverado. This one is a 2500 4x4 equipped with the GM L31. It's the 5.7 Vortec motor. These motors were common, pretty much the mainstay for Chevrolet trucks from year models 96 through 2002 when they were replaced by the 5.3 motor. And uh, boy, we've, we've dealt with these for years. Lots of intake manifold gasket failures. Uh, the injection systems, the CSI injection systems were problematic. They made a MPI upgrade kit. We've done quite a few of those here. With my big gut, I don't really care much for doing the manifold gaskets on these. The updated gaskets never fail once you do those properly, but just hanging over the, the uh, upper core support and servicing the uh, intake manifold is a little bit of a, oh, well, it's easier for a young guy, but uh, I won't whine and complain too much. But this particular one was definitely a uh, an oddity, so to speak, and uh, the customer came in complaining of a lack of heat situation. So after the customer dropped the vehicle, I went out to bring it in and immediately noticed that the check gauges light was illuminated and the coolant temperature gauge was absolutely pegged. So I brought it in and, and found that the coolant was completely empty and then after adding some and pressurizing the system, I noticed an obvious leak at the water pump area. So I didn't do too much more beyond that. I just decided to call the customer and let them know that the water pump was leaking and we should replace that and go from there. I did, you know, give them a little caveat at that point that uh, we, we need to do that as a first step. And, uh, and although uh, it was obvious that there had been some overheating going on that we couldn't really tell much until we fixed the external leakage and went from there. So I did the water pump and, and then after refilling and, and I began running the vehicle outside and I don't know if uh, you're familiar with those vaping devices people uh, use instead of smoking cigarettes but it looked like this truck was vaping out. It had some major vaping going on outside and it was clouding up the entire parking lot and was running rough. It was blowing out little smoke rings out of the tailpipe and it was super concerning. So I brought it back in and then uh, I had to spend a little bit of time. What I did, well, I was highly suspicious that it was of course entering at least one cylinder. It felt like a one cylinder misfire. So I pulled out all the spark plugs and as I'm looking at the plugs, they all looked a little bit wet. And uh, there was a presence of coolant there. So again, I pressurized the system and I had to add more coolant. And I noticed, I mean, at this point, I'd added probably four to five gallons of coolant and water mixture. And it was going somewhere, some of it ending up in the crankcase and some of it ending up in the cylinders. So uh, the next step, I uh, cranked the engine to see if there was any excessive coolant coming out of one given cylinder indicating a cracked cylinder head or blown gasket in a given cylinder. And I was also concerned of the possibility of an, of an internal leak of an intake manifold gasket, but again that wouldn't typically enter a cylinder. Um, if it's leaking inside to the crankcase side where they typically blow out on the ends of the coolant passages on the intake. Uh, so it was a little bit perplexing. I hadn't actually run into this particular issue and I was definitely thinking it was probably cylinder head gasket or cracked head time. So uh, anyway, I pressurized the system again and shoved my camera into the cylinders. So I found that actually all the cylinders had an amount of coolant in them. Well, then I 
became suspicious that the coolant was entering probably somewhere further up the chain, probably in the intake manifold, and lo and behold, after opening the throttle plate and sticking my camera down there, I uh, was able to, to find leakage actually occurring in the intake manifold itself. So uh, unfortunately, the customers declined the repairs on this because it's going to be a few bucks. He's got a bad transmission um, and uh, the engine's got quite a few miles. It's been excessively overheated and I didn't want to have to call him up after we put an intake on this thing and, and tell him that he's, you know, throwing a rod through the side of the motor. I think we could probably get this thing back on the road with just the intake, but uh, I can't take that chance. He's, you know, unfortunately, uh, he's going to have to spend the money and roll the dice on this puppy or just bag it. And I think uh, considering the that the transmission is pretty much fried, kind of slips into gear, and that the engine has high mileage, has been overheated, it's now full of coolant in the crankcase and making a little bit of noise. I think we're gonna, you know, I, I basically said, if you're gonna keep the rig, probably need to go with a motor and transmission replacement, and that's gonna exceed the value of the truck by quite a bit. This would be a great project for a DIY guy. And, you know, if, if, if I had it, I'd probably try an intake. Um, the aftermarket intake manifold kits, which include gaskets and everything, are uh, around 400 bucks for a dormant part. So uh, you, could, you could give that a try and flush out the crankcase really well. And you might be able to squeak a few more miles out of this thing, but um, the train, he's on the way out too. So, um, but I wish I was doing the, the work so I could pull that intake off and actually see what passage is cracked out. I've seen other intakes crack, but you know, I'm trying to think back and I don't recall any of these earlier Vortec motor intakes actually cracking, but, uh, you know, I've, I haven't done millions of them. So I imagine other people have run into that. I mean, I can see where it, where it would happen. I've, I've definitely run into cracked intakes before, but not on this motor. Usually it's the, the gaskets that blow out. I've had the intakes fail trying to remove the, the stupid heater hose coupler that uh, ends up getting stuck in there. And, and then I've had to replace the manifold a couple times for that after I couldn't get the thing extracted. So anyway, another sad story here at the Car Doctor Studios. I don't know why lately cars have just been coming here to die and I like to fix them. I like to get them back on the road. So it's been a little bit discouraging. I hope in the days to come we end up with some uh, some fixable stuff. i am actually got a couple tomorrow that sound like they might be more uh, successful repair operations so keeping my fingers crossed but i want to thank you for stopping by I appreciate the likes and subscriptions and uh wish you good luck with your repairs and if you ever run into these uh these older ones it might just be something you keep keep in the back of your head and might might help you out i hope so all right have a good one take care